We tend to think of pirates as a creation of near contemporary history, savage marauders of the Caribbean and African coastlines. Whilst these are the most iconic pirate ages, the crime and lifestyle of piracy has a long and bloody history. Long before the time of Blackbeard and Calico Jack, it was people in the Mediterranean who first took to the seas to steal from, attack, and raid merchant and naval ships on the shores of the ancient civilizations that lined them. These pirates, commonly referred to as the Sea People, came from seemingly nowhere, ambushing ports and villages on the coastlines of the Mediterranean, as well as capturing ships that traded across the sea. Many civilizations were affected by these pirates, including the ancient Egyptians, Greeks, and Romans. And in today's video, we're going to be exploring how these crimes affected the early stages of empire and history. As time progressed, so did the pirates, and many historical empires and countries found themselves inundated with hordes of pirates, both in Europe and the wider world. Join us as we take a journey far back in time to explore the mysterious and deadly world of ancient piracy, examining the lives of the sea peoples of the Mediterranean, the pirate slave trade of ancient Rome, and the fleets of pirates that affected other areas of Europe and Asia in times long past. Welcome to Walk the Plank. Ancient Egyptian Piracy The first instances of what we know about these early pirates came from the Amarna Letters. In 1350 BCE, these letters were etched onto stone tablets by the Babylonians and sent to Pharaoh Amenhotep III to warn him of raiders that were terrorizing Babylonian towns on their side of the Mediterranean. Mysterious pirates from the seas would dock their ships in the shallow waters of the coastlines, disembark, and run amok on Babylonian soil terrorizing the locals, pillaging settlements, and stealing all they could from the locals. The Babylonians were concerned that these pirates would affect their trade routes with the Egyptians, and so the two civilizations sought to tackle the situation together. Try as they might, though, the pirates persisted. Two main groups of sea peoples operated in the waters around the coastlines of Egypt at this time, groups known as the Lucca and the Sherdan. Of the latter in particular, Pharaoh Ramses II is known to have written, quote, the unruly Sherdan, whom no one had ever known to combat, they came boldly sailing in their warships from the midst of the sea, none being able to withstand them. It was not long before they began to attack merchant and civilian vessels that were sailing through the Mediterranean, and the pharaoh's concerns were realized. It was Ramses III who first coined the term Sea Peoples, a phrase that had been uncovered written on many ancient Egyptian obelisks at archaeological sites across the country. And it wasn't just the Egyptians that found themselves at the mercy of the Lucca, Sherdan, and also the creation Jekka pirates. The Philistines and the Hittites suffered heavy losses from attacks on merchant ships, which affected both their trade routes and diplomatic relations with the Egyptians. At first, the pirates caused colossal problems for governments around the Mediterranean Sea. Ships were sunk, burnt and stolen, treasure was lost, goods failed to reach ports, and civilians were brutally and needlessly slaughtered. Eventually, however, things would change. Other civilizations were growing in power across the sea at the time the pirates were at their most violent, and Egypt could not afford to be affected as heavily as they were by this mysterious threat from the sea when a possible attack from the likes of Greece or Persia were possible. To deal with the pirates, the pharaohs eventually began to hire them, both to sink merchant ships and deal with criminals or raiders. Before too long, the mysterious and terrifying sea people had been turned into the very first privateers the world would ever see. Ancient Greek and Hellenistic Piracy The sea people were treated very differently in ancient Greece. The Greeks were the first of the civilizations to utilize military force to target the pirates, something which is thought to have been very effective in putting the problem down. A lot of what we know about this is steeped in Greek mythology, and ancient sources from the time claim that it was King Minos, a mythological figure who ruled over Crete, who destroyed the sea people operating off the coast of Greece's many islands. It is thought, however, that whoever it was that got rid of the pirates, be it Minos or a living king, could only celebrate for a while. The fleet that destroyed the pirates was apparently wiped out by a huge tidal wave in 1400 BCE, and pirates slowly trickled back into Greek waters shortly after that. Shortly after this, however, it would seem that attitudes to piracy in ancient Greece began to change. It seemed to quickly go from a hated and dangerous crime to a respected means of earning a living. Many of Homer's works, for example, even the Iliad and the Odyssey, make references to this, as do several ancient historians from Greece. Thucydides, who lived between 460 to 396 BCE, wrote, quote, In early times, the Hellenists and the barbarians of the coast and islands, as communication by sea became more common, were tempted to turn pirate. 
Indeed, this came to be the main source of their livelihood, no disgrace being yet attached to such an achievement, but even some glory. This would not last for long though. By the time the classical era came around, piracy in Greece was frowned upon once again, and fewer civilians were taking to the trade. This was possibly a product of the development of written laws and codes, which stated that piracy was an unethical way of making a living, because it profits off the capturing and sometimes even enslavement of innocent people. As a result, the seas did become safer places to travel. Pirates were put off committing their crimes out of fear what would happen to them if they kept going. With the introduction of laws came the introduction of consequences, and while pirates did still operate, they thinned in number. The northern Mediterranean saw a resurgence in piracy after the conquests of Alexander the Great. In the wake of his death, a struggle for power took place amongst his potential successors, each of whom hired pirates to fight against the others. For a long while after, the seas of Greece continued to be plagued by pirates. Ancient Roman Piracy and the Pirate Slave Trade Elsewhere in Rome, pirates were relied upon for a much more sinister profession, slave trading. Powerful or proven pirate captains were funded by the Roman government to orchestrate the capture and delivery of slaves to the Roman Empire. Many of these slave trading pirates were based in the Sicilian city of Sede, which is located in what is now Turkey. Roman slave traders actually funded the development of the city, and temples and facilities were set up there to make it as easy as possible for the pirates to amass as many captives as they could. Many of these pirate slave traders are thought to have ambushed their targets, flying false colours or disguising themselves as merchant ships to lure unsuspecting victims towards their ships. They would draw as many citizens as possible onto their boats by explaining that they had the goods to trade, garnering their attention as the rest of the pirate crew prepared to undock and set sail as fast as possible, holding the terrified and doomed captives at the point of a blade. The pirates then took the slaves to various ports across the Roman Empire, where they were forced by the government to perform many tasks across society. Roman-funded piracy continued to be a major problem for the people of the Mediterranean long after 476 CE, when Rome finally fell to the various barbarian tribes of Europe and North Africa. When the Byzantine Empire claimed some of the land that used to belong to the Roman Empire in the centuries after Rome fell, the pirates of the Mediterranean continued to work as slave traders for them, and many people found themselves transported to the lands of what would one day become the likes of Turkey. In the years that would follow, the Italian peninsula would fall victim to Arabian pirates sailing across from Western Asia, who would take Roman and Greek citizens as slaves. Just like the years following the Golden Age of Piracy, it was hard to completely eradicate these criminals, and many people were impacted for a long time across the Mediterranean. It wasn't just the Romans that used the pirates of the Mediterranean for their own gain. Phoenician merchants, operating on the north coast of Africa, would go on to take a life of crime in order to make money from selling slaves captured across the port towns of the Mediterranean coastline. Before the Romans began to profit from pirates, it is thought that the ancient Etruscans from the Italian peninsula may have taken to piracy with the intentions of capturing slaves for money. These Etruscan pirates were known as the Tyrrhenians and profited almost entirely from the capturing and selling of slaves. Ancient legends from Greece tell action-packed tales of the Tyrrhenians and their piratical acts. One myth claims that a Tyrrhenian slave ship once captured a young man on a Greek island. Prior to having him board the ship, they are warned by the locals that he is the Greek god Dionysus in disguise. The pirates went ahead with their plan anyway, intending to deliver him to Naxos to be sold. As the pirates continued on their voyage, they angered Dionysus, forcing him to reveal his true form. A mighty god who ordered creeping, thorny vines to wrap themselves around the ship and break it into splinters. The vines killed some of the pirates, others were taken by mythological creatures who had been summoned by the raging god. When the pirates realised they had been beaten, they planned to escape, but were transformed into dolphins as they desperately attempted to swim away. Scandinavian Pirates The Vikings were people who were readily and efficiently equipped with dealing with sea voyages and raids, so it is unsurprising that many people from what would one day become Iceland, Norway, Sweden and Denmark took to lives of piracy in times long past. It is even thought that the pirates that operated around the Scandinavian coastlines in the early medieval eras may have been early predecessors and inspirations for the pirates that stormed the Caribbean in the golden age of piracy many years later. While it can be argued that the Vikings themselves were pirates, they plundered, raided, pillaged and stole, many people across the Scandinavian waters around this time also specifically turned to piracy, performing attacks on ships across the North and Baltic seas. Ships were raided by pirates equipped with bows and arrows, broadswords, daggers and axes, and both settlements close to shorelines and boats themselves were targeted. 
These pirates were unpredictable and hardy, quickly taking over their opposition with efficient force and deadly weaponry. Pirates of Eastern Asia Remaining in the medieval period, it is worth taking a trip to the other side of the Eurasian landmass to explore the early world of pirates operating in the seas surrounding China, Korea and Japan in the middle of the 1300s. Whilst these areas of the world did not see as much practical activity as the Mediterranean, the pace picked up in the latter years of the Yuan Dynasty in China. The pirates, known as the Wuku from Japan, were quick to act when China was thrown into uncertainty and turmoil, and many naval and coastal raids took place which saw Japanese pirates taking money and treasures from merchant ships and coastal settlements. The Yuan Dynasty's armies were able to push back the threat from the seas in 1363, but the pirates were vicious and determined and managed to make it to the southern reaches of China. The following Ming Dynasty made a strong effort to get rid of the threat that these pirates posed and did eventually succeed around the turn of the mid 1400s and early 1500s. Merchant ships were forbidden from traveling through the waters of Japan and further efforts were made by navies and militaries to fight the pirate threat. While the pirates persisted, their numbers lessened. Piracy saw a huge resurgence in the waters of China after the golden age of piracy, however, and some of the most notorious figures and battles in all of pirate history can be found in this area of the world. Outro. So that was a crash course through the world of piracy that predated the Golden Age. It may come as a surprise that piracy was so prevalent so long ago, but many people have suffered at the hands of pirates for a very long time indeed. Some of the Mediterranean pirates were amongst the most deadly the world has ever seen, their attacks were some of the first examples of naval raids from criminals, and they were a huge shock to the civilizations of the Mediterranean at first. It was the actions of these pirates, the sea people and early marauders of Europe, Asia and Africa, that would pave the way for the famous faces of the Golden Age several hundred years later. Thank you for watching this episode of Walk the Plank. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week for another video. Cheers.